Okay, so now it's time to shoot. We need to take a shot of this gin bottle in the forest. And I guess we put the Mid Journey AI image into Capture One, yes? Correct. And we add it as an overlay. Exactly. So here we have the image that we created on Mid Journey. And what we can do is we can add that directly onto Capture One as an overlay. And what the cool thing is, you can essentially play with the opacity. Um, so you can see where exactly the image is. And what we're trying to do is overlay the AI image onto uh, the bottle itself. What we can start to do is play around with the scale a little bit. And the cool thing is if you go around to like 40, 50, you basically can start to see the bottle itself, the real bottle and the AI image. And the idea is just to line it up as best as possible. Because essentially all we're doing in Photoshop is gonna be masking out the bottle that we have here onto the AI image. And again, you can play around with it, play it back and forth until you have a pretty good overlay. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you're trying to get it as best as possible because it's obviously going to help in, in Photoshop when we're going to go on there. And for this background, this forest that we created, we need to light it sort of in the same way. We, we went off slightly. Uh, but I think that's the cool part about it because again, we're not trying to like copy paste what's exactly on the AI. It's more importantly, that's the kind of where you still have the creativity as a photographer in there. But again, if obviously in like the, the shot itself and the AI, the light's coming from the back in a certain direction, clearly you're going to have to have the shadows also going in that direction as well. So this image, we have the light coming from the back. So we also have the light coming from the back and we we have the sun back there to the left, on the left side. So we will, we want to have the sun on the left side. And you can see the spot here. And um, this will create a highlight on the right side of the bottle. Because everything is the opposite when you're shooting bottles, you know. Maybe we should take a shot with the first flash. Perfect. Yeah. First light. And what do we get? Light coming from the back, illuminating on the right hand side here. Above the label. We felt it would be nice to have like a glow up yeah. in the right corner there. And that's the light, the sun setting from the back. And uh, what else? Then what we did was to light the entire set a lot more. Um, we essentially added a pro photo here, which is now shooting up onto the ceiling, uh, having a more indirect lighting of the entire scene. So it's essentially sort of lighting up more of the side of the bottle. We take a shot here. So now you can start to see in combination with the light coming from the back, we're going to have like, you know, the shadows are being lifted here because of the uh, indirect light being shot from the top, illuminating the rest of the bottle. We also thought, okay, because this is such a bright light coming and hitting the back here, because we wanted to hit kind of have a nice glow on the right hand side. We started to realize there's going to be a lot of a rim light coming from the back here. And so we, we decided was, and sneak these guys back in here because we're going to composite the image anyway. So since we like what on this side of the bottle, we essentially were saying, okay, cool. Now there's a little bit too much rim light here on this side. So what we're going to have to do in Photoshop is composite these. And again, what's cool is we can sneak back over to live view. Because we wanted to be dark all the way out on that side. We didn't want to have a rim light on that side. Exactly. And what we're trying to do is just before we touch it, because the problem is, when we're doing like this, we screw up the other side, you know. So we need to do composite. Exactly. And we want to work fast. So we're going to take another snap now. Now it's only for the left side of the bottle. And so you can see now that white rim light is now gone. Now, what did you want to do with the gobo? We can use the label like moody and dark, mm -hmm. but maybe it can be nice to add like a light play, shadow play going on on the label. So we are using this guy, a uh, projection light with a gobo inside, uh, a jungle gobo. <laughs> and what we noticed was that the label, it will be lit up by the back flash. So the, the label becomes like orangey. So we turn that guy off so we can take a shot now random chaos on the label but we also can take this one away and then we add even more contrast on the label
And again, we're talking about slight differences here, which again, we can play around with in, in Photoshop when we can pause it all these together. So I would say we're ready to jump into Photoshop then. Yes, it's time to do the magic, composite them together. Let's do it. Okay. So now we have the blue shot. And this is what we created in Mid Journey, yes? Yeah. And now we will try to get this bottle into this shot. And how we would do this? Is it possible? That's the idea. We're going to test it out right now. Yes. I guess we start in Capture One and put it as an overlay. And uh, you have a trick with the live view. So the cool thing about Capture One is you can have an overlay on live view. So essentially you can really see what is happening live. And then what we can do is add the image, the AI generated image directly onto the live view. And if you start to play around, so when you add the overlay in there, you're going to have the image like this. But what I tend to do is just reduce that down to about 40 to 50%. So then you can really start to see the bottle as well as the AI generated image. So you can start to line up the, the whatever bottle is, so Bombay Sapphire bottle with uh, what bottles there is in the uh, AI image. Because important thing here is the shadows, yes? So we need to get the light at the same angle. Yeah. Getting the light at the same angle, so the shadows that are casted from the light are the same as in the uh, image itself, as well as the angle of the actual camera. The angle of the camera is also super important. And then it comes very in handy to use this live function, you know, without it, it would be very, very hard, I would say. Yeah, it's probably a lot of trial and error then. So this obviously saves you a lot of time and then playing with the opacity as well, so you can really line up the bottle perfectly. So maybe we should turn that guy on, because we have a flash over there. And do we see some shadows going on? We have this diffusion paper now. So we didn't start with diffusion, because it was easier to see the shadow play going on without the diffusion. That's a good point, yeah. It was just a bare flash, actually. Placing the bottle and then placing the light, and then doing fine-tuning adjustments. One centimeter that way, one centimeter that way, until you get the shadows in the right direction. So we added this diffusion. It's a savage medium, so we get a bit of a soft gradient going on on this side. But we felt that the label is white, it's too bright, so we would just take a shot when we are holding like a black card around here somewhere, something like that, yeah. and then we take the shot. So it's not like... I would say maybe we take a shot. And there it is. I think we should do a bit of a shadow on the label so it's not super super bright but i think it looks kind of nice so let me play with this car the black car i was thinking something like we have a bit of golden on the left side mm. still we can try another one yeah. maybe like that Let's see what we got here this is the first one yeah second a bit too much maybe something in between yeah exactly. so we have all Variations. Like I said before, uh, capture one live view and overlay of the AI image directly onto uh, uh, capture one live. So I would say when we jump into Photoshop, yes, and composite that in. That's a good idea. <laughs> Great. 